Hi, welcome everybody. My name is Leonardo Gutierrez. In this talk, I want to show you how you can easily write a robust bash scripts. There is a lot of interesting content that I want to get through in this uh, quick talk. So I'm going to be covering a few techniques that you can you can easily implement in your in your projects. Uh, you have my content contact information there. I'll be publishing a, a link uh, with the slides uh, in my Twitter account after after this presentation. So a little bit about myself. I'm a senior systems engineer working for Autoson. I've been there for seven years now, I think, uh, using a lot of uh, open source technologies. So let's get started. Okay, so what can go wrong here? Uh, first of all, please do not run that command, otherwise you you will delete all your files. So please don't don't run it. Uh, the terrible situation explained it in that GitHub issue could have been easily avoided using a single command. Let me try to explain what uh, what happened uh, here. Basically, the RM command is trying to use a, a variable that doesn't exist. Bash um, tries to expand the, the variable, the, the value of the, of, of the variable, I'm sorry. It fails to do that. Uh, it ignores that the variable doesn't exist and uses uh, a slash wildcard as the argument and, and well, uh, the files are gone. If you want to know what happened with that issue, you can go to the to the link in the slide and read the, the full conversation. Uh, let's see another example of what can go wrong if we ignore this kind of uh, little things. Uh, okay, here we have a similar scenario. If the logs variable doesn't exist, the shell will ignore that and the command will copy everything from the slash uh, to the Saunders um, logs uh, directory. So. You might have um, a disk space issue depending on what you have in your, you know, in your file system. Okay, here we have a full a full script example with the sheet bank and everything. Uh, so be really careful when you see code uh, like this, especially with these uh, commands that can be really dangerous. Okay. So how do we fix it? We can fix it uh, very easily. We want to know when a variable is not set. For that, we just need to use the set uh, shell built-in with the non-set option. This will make your scripts uh, to fail immediately if a variable is, is not set. If you run the code in the slide, you could get an error. You, you're gonna get an error saying uh, something like steam root unbound uh, variable and in the last code snippet uh, that is another another way of fixing that using shell parameter expansions if the steam root uh, variable is not defined the message is not defined will be printed uh, in in this in the standard error and the shell will exit uh, with a non-zero uh, code so as you can see, it is very easy to protect ourselves with these uh, little mechanisms, with these uh, shell built-ins. Right, what if any, any other error occurs? Ideally, we should either um, catch that error or handle it with a non-zero code. To fail immediately, if an error occurs, we can use Again, the, the set uh, shell built in, but now with the error exit option. Let's see um, an example. Okay, as you can see here, we are trying to copy a file that doesn't exist. Um, we have in the in the tier line CP not found, and we're trying to uh, copy that file to the X um, file. But we are we are using the the error exit in the in the second line. So the the CP command will finish with an error and the ls command uh, one one run. As you can see, this is a good way of finishing script execution earlier 
if something uh, really bad happens. Um, the last two command lines show you how you can bypass or ignore um, an error and if you want to disable the, the, the behavior you can use uh, you can use those options in, in at the right of the slide set uh, plus o r exit or set plus e okay this is a, another example example where where we are bypassing their checking you can see um, you can you can use the same say, the same set uh, shell built-in with the with same option but now instead of dash uh, o you you use plus plus o once you're done once you're done uh, with section that you don't want to you don't want to check you can enable enable it back Okay, which one should you use? Which one should we use? Um, I have seen a lot of uh, scripts in different code bases where they use uh, both and they are totally, um, totally different. In some systems, the first shebang in the slide actually points, uh, points to, uh, to a symlink uh, pointing to the, to the bash um, to the to the bash binary in some other systems you will see that being sh actually points to to another to uh, to a uh, to six uh, shell compliant uh, compliant shell so you need to be really careful on what on what to use and which one to use um, so as you can see in these commands in this slide um, Bin bash is is totally different to being a sage in in some system in some systems. So be really careful about that. So my suge my suggestion here is that if you are writing bash shell scripts, then use a bash sh shebang. Do not use being a sage uh, thinking that it will point to 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 the bash shell. It might be it might be a different case. I have seen those uh, weird scenarios where the developers uh, use uh, being a sage event and they, their scripts don't don't behave as as expected. Okay, this is a really similar scenario. Uh, as shown before, uh, do not run your scripts with a sage and then your script unless you you want to, of course. Um, here we might have uh, the same problems as I mentioned before. What I, what happens if I if if I run the code in if I run that code in my system? Let's see what happens. Um, here we can see that the previous script didn't run as expected. Bin uh, is is uh, pointing to something different that, than than the bash shell. I think it's pointing to the to the dash to the dash shell. I'm not I'm not sure. I need to check. Um, okay. If you want to know if you are using code that is totally specific to bash. Uh, you can use this check positions uh, program. It will it will um, show you where you're using where you're using positions and change suggestion to make your scripts uh, POSIX uh, compliant. Okay, this is another good suggestion. Um, sometimes we want to concatenate the strings, right? Um, in this specific example, the shell will try to expand the, expand the EMB variable and it won't find it. So whenever you can, use braces around your, your variable names to make it clear to, you know, to ab ab avoid confusions. Um, also, that could have been easily um, fixed uh, using the null and set option. So, for example, in that in that code, that code snippet could uh, could um, 
could fail with the non-set um, option. This error is also very common. As you can see in this example, we're using the classic uh, sort and then the, the sort unique uh, operations, but we're not doing anything here to make sure that, that the sort command finishes uh, successfully before it passes the, 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 the information to the unique command. So if you run that, that command, you will see that the life is good is printed to the terminal, even that the not found file um, doesn't exist. So what will be the output of the code example? As you can imagine, um, life is good is printed to the standard output and we, we don't want that. So how do we fix it? The solution is, is really easy. Uh, to fix it, we just need to, to, to use a set uh, shell built in again, but now with the pipe fail option. That way, um, when the sort command is executed, um, all, the, all the code there will fail. The script will fail with the non-zero code. All right, uh, another good suggestion. Uh, variables in Bash, you know, they have uh, global scope. It means that if you declare declare a variable inside a function, it will it will be available through the whole program. So we as programmers we want to to reduce the scope of our variables, right? So um, they are only available in the scope where where they are used or needed. Um, so here in the in the example, we can see that the i variable uh, declaring inside the count function will be available even after we call that that uh, function. This is not a this is not a good thing. We we want to reduce the scope. We want the we want the variable i to 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 live only in that in that count uh, function. We want to reduce the scope. So. Um, so how can we fix it? For that, in order to fix it, we just need to use the local uh, All right, so to fix it, uh, we need to use another uh, shell built-in. Now we are gonna use the local, the local shell built-in. So that will help us to reduce the scope of our variables. And if you are using the if you are already using the non-set option, that will make your script even better, because because um, you won't have null or unset uh, variables around. So, as you can see, we can use these um, little shell built-ins to to make our scripts better and more uh, robust. Okay. Um, in Bash, as in other languages, uh, we can use uh, conditional execution with the AND and, and OR operators. But sometimes uh, we might have um, unexpect, unexpected results due to not uh, using these operators properly as in, as in the example. That is a common situation where we want to like simulate the, the if-else uh, um, statements with um, with um, conditional execution. Um, so as you can see here in the example, uh, we are trying to copy a file, the, the file that t, txt to a backup. Uh, we're just trying to create a backup of that file. And um, as you can see in the, in the output below, um, that is executed um, successfully so the backup created uh, successfully message is printed uh, to the console. But what if the next sec sentence fails? I mean, what if the, if the sourcing of the conf.emb uh, uh, file fails? Or what if that file uh, doesn't exist? Uh, we wouldn't expect the code in the, in the, um, in the OR uh, section to be to be executed, right? So 
Well, that is actually executed uh, as in as in the output. Um, that happens due to how precedence uh, of the logical and and or uh, operators uh, work in in Bash and some other languages. Uh, the good news is that we can fix that very very easy. Let's see let's see how. So to fix it, instead of using conditional uh, execution, we just need to use a regular, you know, if else statement as as in the as in the example. We can see in the in the output that um, error creating backup um, message is not is no longer in the in the output. We see backup created successfully, and then a file does not exist. Um, all right so that is the expected output in in this case so the suggestion the suggestion here is do not use do not use conditional execution only for single uh, single sentences do not use it to simulate a uh, an if else uh, a statement because you might have unexpected uh, results This suggestion is not uh, really for Bash, but um, it is something you should have into consideration if you use cron jobs in, in production environments. Uh, I'll read the question, the question first. What can go wrong with the following code if, if the script uh, triggers errors that are not uh, redirected uh, properly? Well, uh, as you can see, we have a script or, or cron job that is executed um, every minute. Uh, what happens if, if the scripts uh, that runs every minute fails? Um, and we have the script content uh, below. It's a really simple uh, script. It just run a uh, rm command against a file that uh, doesn't exist. Okay, so let's run it to see what, uh, see what happens. Uh, if the script fails every minute, it will send an email to your account with the with the error uh, output with some explanation. The problem with that is that uh, is, is that it might in, you might have later a disk space issue due to all the emails generated uh, in the in the bark uh, disk partition, depending on, on how you have your system configured. Okay, so let's see how how you can fix that. The first option uh, is to redirect all the script output to a log file that you can handle, handle it in a, in a better way or analyze uh, later. Um, you could do that from the cron tab uh, line, as in the first uh, full snippet, or inside the, the, the script. And you could also set the main to uh, environment variable to uh, to empty to avoid sending any any emails. Okay, um, another suggestion: you should always implement some uh, error handling in critical parts in in your script. Um, in in the example, we're trying to send um, a file to a server, and then we think that everything went uh, well. We print the message and then exit with a with a zero with a zero code. The problem is that if the script is executed uh, automatically, let's say to cron, then we will notice that it uh, that, that it failed, right? So um, just imagine how painful it will be to find out that this uh, important or critical job has been failing uh, for a while and you didn't. You didn't know this, notice that. This is the last suggestion. Use uh, shell check whenever you can. Uh, shell check is a is a tool that you can use uh, that you can use to find potential bugs bugs in your code. It will show you what is wrong with that, uh, and it will give you uh, an explanation on why the code is not is not right and how you can you can fix it. So use it whenever you can. It is a really it is a really useful tool, and it will make your scripts uh, definitely 
um, better. So that's it from my side. Uh, thanks for your time. Thanks for listening. If you have any question, feel free to ask. You can reach me uh, out uh, in Twitter or email or use the, the, the conference platform. Okay, thank you so much. Bye-bye.